What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield of EGC 2021 Series 10 video. Today, I wanted to talk about Urshifu Rapid Strike and just the sheer amount of value it can bring to a team in the 2021 Series 10 metagame. But before we get into that, do me a favor, if you enjoyed this video at any point in time, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content. Answer my comment question of the day, why do you think... Uh, Urshifu single strike form has dropped so much in usage while Urshifu has risen so much. I'd like to know and yeah let's go ahead and get into it. So Urshifu Rapid Strike is a fighting and water type Pokemon with some pretty interesting tools at its disposal. Its stats are 100 HP, 130 attack, 100 defense, 63 special attack, 60 special defense, and 97 speed. Its ability is Unseen Fist, which is a brand new ability in this game that allows it to hit through protection if it's a contact move that it's using. So because it's a physical attacker and it's a fighting and water type, a lot of the moves it's going to use are actually contact moves, and it has a special move at its disposal called Surging Strikes, which is a 3-hit move that always results in a critical hit with 25 base power and 100% accuracy. Now this Pokemon sounds absolutely busted on paper, and some people have said with a non-Dynamax format, the Urshifu forms would become busted, and to an extent, I sort of agree, but I think that they're kind of under control since it's a restricted format as well. Now, what does Urshifu Rapid Strike allow the, uh, the user to do that other fighting type Pokemon wouldn't really allow to do? Well, Urshifu Rapid Strike while not having an ability like Inner Focus or Oblivious, making it immune to Intimidate, is somewhat immune to Incineroar's Intimidate in particular. Because Urshu Rapid Strike is able to one-shot Incineroar with its move Surging Strikes, which always results in a critical hit and is super effective against Incineroar, of course. Now, this provides a lot of value to a team because Incineroar is an extremely valuable part in many teams, it's one of the most common Pokemon in the entire format, and it's just a perfect counter to it. Obviously, this thing can be countered by quite a few Pokemon because of its uh, special frailty, but it is pretty bulky on the physical side, and it is relatively fast for Pokemon Sword and Shield standards. But before we get into what it does for certain teams, let's talk about the pretty much one and only moveset you're going to need to know for this guy. There isn't much you can do for it to make it bulkier. Sometimes I have seen people run Assault Vest sets, but I just don't think they're worth it. The one set that I'm going to recommend to you guys is going to be Focus Sash with Surging Strikes, Close Combat, Aqua Jet, and Detect. And your EV spread is going to be 4 HP, Max Attack, Max Speed with a Jolly Nature. Now there are some things you can adjust about this, and I have actually used an alternative set where instead of Aqua Jet, I use U-Turn, and instead of a Focus Sash, I've used Mystic Water. However, if the Focus Sash is available to you, if you're not using it next to a Regieleki or a Tornadus, for example, you're going to want to go ahead and use the Focus Sash on this thing just to get as much as you can out of it. And that, of course, does make Detect or Protect optimal for making sure that you avoid as many fake outs as possible. So... This set is actually really powerful because it's able to check a number of Pokemon in the format. These Pokemon that come to mind are going to be Ho-Oh, Incineroar, Stakataka, and Volcarona. Now, the ones that are most notable are really just going to be Incineroar and Stakataka, with Volcarona being only for certain matchups and Ho-Oh being a very rare case. Ho-Oh, of course, has fallen off in usage in recent um in recent metagame developments, mainly because a lot of people have been valuing Entei over it. While Entei is something that uh, Urshifu is able to deal with, Entei is actually naturally faster than it. So if the Entei is managing to get a Sacred Fire off and burning your Urshifu, then you aren't going to be able to one-shot it. However, if it does not get that burn, you are one-shotting it as well. I might as well just go over every Pokemon that it, lets, that it likes to be partnered with right now because a lot of these Pokemon do struggle against fire types, which Urshifu is a perfect counter for. The builds that you're going to see Urshifu Rapid Strike on tend to be Zacian builds, uh, and Wazacian teams tend to be partnered up with Urshifu because they don't like dealing with Incineroar. They also don't like dealing with Trick Room or Volcarona, so Urshifu being able to one-shot both Stack Attacka and the Volcarona with Surging Strikes or Close Combat is actually really big for them. 
it allows for a hole to be opened up in the team, which uh, Zacian is able to take full advantage of. You can go ahead and set up like a substitute on the Urshifu's turn where it goes for an attack on the fire type and then sweep through the rest of the team, just worry-free. No need to worry about Intimidate for the rest of the game because Incinera is off the field. And honestly, once the fire type or like the problematic bulky Trick Room Pokemon is gone, Zacian just has a field day. You can also pair Zacian with Landorus Eye if you really felt like it to deal with these Pokemon. However, I do think that Urshfu Rapid Strike is a much more consistent Pokemon. Another build that Urshfu likes to find a place on is actually Xerneas teams. Now, Xerneas teams are notorious for having a bad matchup versus Ho-Oh in particular. However, they also have a natural counter in Incineroar. Many Incineroar are running a specially defensive set, which run Fake Out, Roar, Snarl, and a Fire Move usually Flare Blitz, uh, and because of that, they're actually bulky enough where they can be EV, uh, they can be EV'd into their special defense where they can tank a plus two Moonblast, get their Figgy Berry, or if they're running Safety Goggles, just generally live the hit and go for a roar against your Xerneas. Now that isn't necessarily an option they have if you lead off or just have a Urshifu next to your Xerneas. You can actually conserve the Geomancy until a point in the game where the Incineroar play is no longer something they can do or if you just remove it from the field entirely with your Urshifu, that is very big. And while Xerneas doesn't like dealing with Landorus Eye, and Urshifu itself doesn't like the Landorus Eye matchup because of its low special bulk, if you are running a Focus Sash set, you are able to one-shot that. And Landorus Eye is very powerful, obviously it can one-shot your Urshifu, but like I said, if you play smart, if you have good speed control, if you keep your Focus Sash intact, it's really no problem for the Urshifu at all. Uh, one of the final sets, or one of the final uh, team compositions that you're going to see Urshifu Rapid Strike on a lot is actually going to be the Shadow Rider Calyrex build. And I will say this, Shadow Rider Calyrex won't take Urshifu as its first choice as a fighting type. However, I have seen it on an Urshifu team multiple times. Uh, the reason is because Mian Shao is sort of a perfect partner for uh, Calyrex Shadow Rider. It's able to not only be completely immune to Incineroar's Intimidate, but it has a faster fake out and is able to one-shot it back with High Jump Kick. And while you may not want to run that for certain builds, um, it's the majority of the time going to be the best option. But let's say, hypothetically, you don't think you want to run, uh, you don't think you want to run a Mian Shao on your team. You think that Urshifu is going to be optimal for your build. Well, Urshifu is actually really good for this as well because one, it can deal with opposing Trick Room Mons, and two, it can deal with that Incineroar, which would otherwise be able to just spam Snarl nonstop against your team. The Fighting type is a very important role on Shadow Rider Calyrex teams, and just having it filled by Urshifu means that uh, there is very little defensive play that Fire types or Dark types can do versus it. So yeah, uh, there are some builds that actually opt not to have Urshifu on their team. If you were to run an Urshifu on certain builds, you would usually go with the Dark type, if any Urshifu at all. Uh, for example, if you're using a Kyogre team, your Water type is usually covered. And there's really no need for a second water type on that team unless you're running Ludicolo or a Swift Swimmer. Typically defensively, it's smarter to spread out your weaknesses a bit better than that. So if you were to go with an Urshifu or a Fighting type, it would not be the Urshifu Rapid Strike. Uh, Sun teams definitely do not want Urshifu Rapid Strike. While it is a very strong Pokemon despite the Sun because of its crits, you'll find that Rapid Strikes in the Sun is significantly weaker because of that decrease in power. And it's just not worth using at that point. I would actually say that the Urshifu Dark Form is much more suited to fitting on a Sun Team because of this, and because just being able to spam Wicked Blow against many of the Pokemon that want to use Trick Room against Sun compositions, since they do have fast Pokemon on their team like Chlorophyll Venusaur, is much more reliable. So yeah, uh, that's going to be my thoughts on Urshifu Rapid Strike. I know this wasn't the most in-depth video, but I wanted to give you guys an explanation as to the value that it can provide to many teams in this metagame, why it's used, why we're seeing a lot more of it in comparison to other Urshifu. Uh, but yeah, if you guys enjoy this, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.